like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Nobody thought she in prison. Prison is for motherfucking karma. Mm. So a bitch would be in there for something they didn't do. For karma they paying off from something shit they did. Ain't no mistakes, bitch. You right where you supposed to be. To the remaining members, I hope you're free your mind. Life without parole, that's a mighty long time. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you present to the court to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you out? I do. State your name and spell. I ain't even gonna hold y'all, but why Aya, aka Porsche Wade, just knew she was about to use them notes to testify, aka test the lie? I do. State your name and spell it for the court, please. Porsche Wade. P-O-R-C-H-A-E, last name Wade, W-A-D-E. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wade. Uh, Ms. Wade, how old are you? Um, uh, Hold before, on. Before Ms. Wade answers, she has no papers. papers. I ain't even finna hold y'all, but this part of the trial is one of those hilarious moments. Like, Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, really thought that she was about to sit up there and read from her notes to testify. The judge, Stacey Hydrick, had to let her know, like, mm-mm, no ma'am. Um, uh, Hold on. Before Ms. Wade answers, she has no papers. papers. Yeah. She, she can't answer questions. Okay, you, you, you won't be able to use notes, Ms. Wade. You'll have um, to turn can those Can you grab them from her, please? Sure, Judge. Okay. Can I use my notes? No ma'am. Why not? Ma'am. The law. Thank you, Ms. Wade. Uh, Ms. Wade, how old are you? Um, uh, Hold on. Before Ms. Wade answers, she, she has no papers. papers. Yeah, she can't. Okay, you, you, you won't be able to use notes, Ms. Wade. You'll have um, to turn can those Can you grab notes. them from her, please? Sure, Judge. Okay. I cannot use my notes. No, ma'am. Why not? Ma'am. The law. You can't use notes. What? Okay, take your, you got to take out the papers. All right, very good. All right, I have a paper, Judge. Okay, thank you. I honestly do not know what Aya was about to say there because the judge just shut her down. Why Aya, aka Porsche Wade, was sitting on the stand acting like she was picking up her award from the Grammys? Talking about some before I get started. No, ma'am, there is no before you get started. There are questions and answers. That's it. No, no, no before you start. You answer the questions. I do want no. to put on the record that I did okay. file a complaint no. okay. with Judge Tiger. No, no. no. Judge, if, if we get home. You're not listening. You're not listening. Are you going to listen? Are you going to Are you going to answer the questions? You don't get to just spur I can answer questions. the questions. Okay, so okay. let's just drop that and stay right there. I'm not going to let her do this again. I'm going to give you one chance, one more chance. To act appropriately. Otherwise, you're going to be removed from the courtroom. So ask a question, Mr. Booker, and answer that question and that question only, ma'am. Ms. Wade, how old are you? I'm 36. Okay. I know that there are more things that you want to say. Let's just try to get through the question, okay? Okay. All right. Um, where were you born in, Ms. Wade? I was born in Pasadena, California. Okay. All right. And how long have you lived in Georgia? I've lived in Georgia for going on three and a half years okay. to four. Okay. What kind of education do you have? I have a high school education, some college. Okay. Where did you go to college at? I went to college, Pasadena City College. Okay. Do your parents live in California? Yes, they do. Okay. Do you stay in regular contact with them? No. Okay. Is that by your choice? My mother is deceased just recently, and my father is honorable discharge from the military. The U.S. Army? 
Yes. Okay. Yes, Marilyn Clark. Marie. Okay. Do you stay in contact with him? No. Okay. Is that by your choice? No, it is because of his medical um, condition found in the military. In the military? In the military. Okay. All right. Do you have any children? I have one. Okay. And how old is your child? Fourteen. Okay. All right. Do you have any children? I have one. Okay. And how old is your child? Fourteen. Okay. Yes. Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, has a now 14-year-old son. That son, if I'm not mistaken, was about seven or eight when she left to join the cult, Carbonation. Okay. And how old is your child? 14. Okay. All right. Where did you live in Atlanta? I lived at 2993 Arbor Chase in Decatur, Georgia. Okay. And who did you stay there with? I stayed there with Olivia Bishop and a few other people. Do you want me to name them all? No, you just, uh, about how many people stayed there? I was roughly around 16, 15, 16 people. Okay. Was it a mixture of males and females? Yes, it was. Okay. All right. Uh, and during the time that you lived there, um, was there music production, video production happening? Yes, there was a constant um, music and video production daily. Okay. And did you take part in the music and video production? Yes, I did. What did you do? Um, I was an actor. Okay. So basically, I was one of the main people who were always on camera. Whether it was we were singing, whether we were dancing, whether we were doing a skit, uh, or whether we were just teaching, okay. I was one of the main persons that was online. Okay. And was it decided before you got online uh, what the skit would be about, or was it just improv? Sometimes we would decide what it would be before. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time we would improv. Okay. But before we would improv, everybody was well aware that we were because people were, um, there were certain designated cameramen. Okay. So when you had the camera around, you knew that it was, we were, we were live. Okay. And was that something that was done every single day? It was done every day. Um, there was a time that we did take off for a few weeks on social media and that's when we were harassed. Okay. And when you were harassed, was there, um, were there people that came, did the police come thinking that you were uh, in some sort of trouble? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, may I escort the witness up? Yes. Hey y'all, if you are here with me at the premiere, how y'all doing? I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night based on wherever you're tuning in from. Guys, if you haven't done so already, do me a quick favor. Go on ahead and smash that like button one time. If you're catching this on the replay, Replay gang gang. Y'all know I rocks with the replay gang gang. Replay gang stand up. Go on ahead and drop me some comments. Smash that like button and share, share, share. Now y'all know we cannot proceed until I say hey to my bush babies. How y'all doing over there in the bushes? Y'all, come on over to the channel. Subscribe today. Set your notifications to all so that you're notified when I go live or add new content. Okay. Your Honor, rather than Put, the, use the mic. Rather than me watching it, trying not to look here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Rather than me watching it and then making a relevant subjection, I know I'm going to make a relevant subjection. So That's fine. Let's just, just go ahead and play. 
Now, just for the record, could you explain what we just said at the bench conference, Mr. Yeah, Rivera? Put, at, put that on the record. Yeah, at the bench conference, the state uh, indicated to the court that they would have an objection uh, for relevance regarding the uh, body cam video that I'm attempting to play through uh, Ms. Wade. Uh, the body cam, the state has now in their computer, they're sending up their, uh, they're going to play the video for the entire court. The question was whether or not it was relevant or not. Uh, my response was it was relevant because it deals with uh, whether or not people were being held against their will, and it also goes directly to the question uh, that she just asked, and she just responded to it in the witness, Ms. Wade, uh, of whether uh, there was a time that they were uh, not online and that people were being sent to the house in order to control them. Uh, and it was real time record with that. She's on the video. She's actually the first person to get on. Okay. Go ahead and play. Look, Mr. Booker, do you know which portion of the video it is? It's a very short video. Judge. That's fine. It's, it's, it's the entire video, maybe five, seven minutes. I'm not exactly sure. All right. Sure. Where? Um, it just starts. Oh, let me. All right. Let me, hold on one second. Yeah, I've got to fix this. Let me. Okay. Oh, it's, well, you have to get it to where, is that your computer screen? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. It, the program is opening now. Will we come here to order? What the prosecution and the defense, as well as Judge Stacy Heydrich, are discussing right now is Mr. Booker's request to play police body camera footage of one of the many times that DeKalb County police came to the Arbor Chase house. What will this prove? I don't know, but he wanted to show it and the judge is going to allow it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, I speak to her real quick to make sure she's okay. Yeah. Hey, can I speak to her? Yeah. 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 Let me ask you a question, because it seems to be there's a girl research on there. Mm -hmm. Seems to be one person. Do you know who that one person might be? Uh, well, listen, this is a group of people who's probably world news, who are doing world news. It's the same thing. Um, most of these scholars are the same thing, it's the same person that's doing it. They're just holding it. They're just doing that to show Can I ask what kind of... 
stuff you might be doing on the internet. It's true, you know what I'm saying, but we we get the articles and debates and all that. You know about young Pharaoh. Y'all, by this time, DeKalb County was already investigating Elihio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy, a.k.a. Chief Hopper John Hot Pocket, a.k.a. Chief Administrative Segregation. The affidavit states, I believe, that they had been investigating him for three weeks. So by the time the police were knocking at the door, they were already conducting a investigation. And I'll be debating young Pharaoh. It's just like, oh, what's going on? Why you going to the bank? And you're good. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all. Okay. 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 They don't know why. They don't know why I'm asking you. They just, uh, let's see, whatever. So, but they may have access to your first name. Yeah. 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 Or, or, okay. They keep doing this. They, they keep yeah. doing this. They keep doing this. They keep doing this. I hope y'all can hear the audio well because I enhanced it as much as possible. But the officer just asked Elihio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, well, how do they know where you reside? And of course, you know he about to lie. He not about to tell those officers that he put his own address out on Beyonce's internet? Well, on my house, it looked up, like, things that look, you know what I'm saying? Similar, and they look up online, and then they find your address, and then they post it online, and it's like, well, that's a simple. Is there a couple more people? A couple more people? Yeah. Black people. People. Oh, it's a girl. I just heard voices. That's what I thought. Yeah, now I spoke to the guy. Come in and check if y'all want me. Are you pretty sure then that will make me add comments to this? Yeah, come on. Come on. How you doing? That's what we That's what we are. I just grabbed one stick and I'm sure it's going to fall. And it's a little after you have to hold my line like four days. Usually we got to go live every day. Not this day on? No, some nigga. Any or something. That's what that was. Okay. I'm just going to hear. I'm going to hear. I'm going to try to report it. You're not going to watch this soon. Oh, you're the best? Yeah. You okay, man? Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's a problem. I, I said the clock bedroom. We got a call for somebody saying they been kind of getting through with them. You okay? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's my bedroom. Yeah, Everybody don't count this one. Let's know so I'm not crazy. And it's been my body count was recording everything, so I just want to make sure. For my body can't break down. Then y'all want to have it. And right here. Mm-hmm. That's just the one. Give a second. I don't want to run. When I get done, you all just tell me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go. Go ahead. 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 If everybody's okay, everybody's here on the on free way. Like not saying why they my girlfriend, I ain't legally married to someone. But we do have a political relationship, so that's what makes it like you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. So, like, the baby watching us all line, you know what I'm saying? We get paid. Like, I'm going to be done, John. Hey, come get him out.
objection is okay. relevance to any issue, also hearsay to almost all of it. Obviously, Mr. Bishop's statements that he made to the police officers are not admissible. Obviously, I would also argue that the statements at the beginning that Ms. Wade made to the police officers explaining her why she believes people are there because there are trolls online that are attempting to essentially swat them. Didn't she, didn't she say that nobody was being held against their will? She testified. She testified to that, yeah. right? Okay. Mr. Booker, she testified to that, so what's, what is the relevance of this? Judge, this is the most relevant thing. So I'm assuming the state in their holding is not going to argue that people were held in this house against their will. That's been the thing that we've been in this entire trial, that they have argued that people have been held against their will by Mr. Bishop. There's counsel in there for false imprisonment. All these people are there. They can't leave. They got to run out at night. This is an extraordinarily relevant issue. Secondarily, it goes toward the fact, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, we're not saying that she's held against her will. What she said is that people, police would come there because there were times they did not produce videos and they came there during a time that they were down and they, they were being trolled and she's explaining that. Thirdly, if the state's going to argue that this is somehow hearsay, across this entire state, Judge, there is body-worn camera that people are saying all types of things on throughout the entire camera. It has not been used as hearsay throughout our courts and it's not hearsay here today. It is extraordinarily relevant. It's not hearsay. Body-worn camera, there's no hearsay exception for body-worn camera. I agree, Judge, but it's played every day in the courts. Well, that's a separate issue, Mr. Booker. Mr. Coveney, what's your response? It's not relevant to the extent it's relevant. All audio needs to be redacted with the exception of a few statements near the end. She's already testified that people weren't, I mean, I think you can ask her about what happened that day and, you know, she, and no one, nobody indicated they were being held against their will. I don't have a problem with that. And she's already testified it, but I don't, I don't think this is relevant. So what's the legal ruling, Judge? The legal ruling is it's irrelevant. She can test, she's already testified that they weren't being held against her will. So if you want to ask her that on a particular day when the police were there, nobody said they were, no one reported that they were being held against her will, that's fine. But I don't see the need for the video footage. I don't think it's relevant. And it's not relevant to what, what issue is what I'm asking the legal ruling for? Well, she's already testified to it. Whatever the information on the video, she's already testified about it. No, that's not the relevant issue, Judge. Now I'll state it so we have a clear record here. The relevant issue is that throughout the entire case, the state has had a common thread that these women and men have been held there against their will. Okay. This video gives the exact opposite. I agree that she said that, but it also further goes to support what she just testified to, which was that they were getting trolled. There were times that people would call the police and make certain assertions to them that, hey, police, these people are being held there against their will. That's exactly what that video shows. That's, she can say that the police came out, nobody reported that they were being held against their will. That's essentially what the purpose is of this video footage. So I'm fine with her saying that, but I don't see the relevance of the need for the video. So I'll allow her to say that the police came out on this, on whatever date that was, and that nobody reported to the police. They were being held against their will. The police came in, searched everything, and nobody said anything about being held against their will. Okay. But, but your rule is that it's irrelevant because... It's cumulative, it's cumulative, and... So not relevant, it's cumulative. It's both. It's both, Mr. Buckar. All right. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right. Bring the jurors back in. All right. If we can have a seat, please. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes, he was. Okay. And there was a time that he they came to search mm-hmm. where he wasn't there. We were just um, me and Caleb Buckner were just coming back from the grocery store. Okay. And they pulled up on us. It was just me and her. We were getting out the car. Okay. And they asked us if everything was okay. Okay. And we let them know that yeah, we were just coming from the store. Okay. What do you remember? What year that was? That was the same year, um, 2022. Okay. All right. And you and Kayla were coming back from the grocery store. Hey guys, I am back with yet another amazing book, The Tribe of Judah Experience, authored by Elizabeth, aka Liz. Guys, if you're interested in being one of the first people to get this book, it is available for pre order now. All you have to do is is go to Liz's IG page, which is here on the screen right now, click on the link in her bio, and it will take you directly to amazon.com so you could go ahead and get on the pre-order list today. And 22. Okay. All right, and you and Kayla were coming back from the grocery store? Yes, we were. So you were actually allowed to go to the grocery store? Yes, of course. Oh, okay. All right, and how did you get there? I drove. You did? Yes. Wow, okay. You could actually drive to the grocery store. All right, and Mr. Bishop didn't have to, to follow you or anything like that to go to the grocery store? No, that's ridiculous, no. Okay, all right. Um, so women were allowed to go to the grocery store if they wanted to go? Yes. Okay, all right. Now, um, going back to improv versus acting, singing, things like that. Um, were you trained in acting or singing, or is it something you just learned how to do? It's something that I just learned how to do. Okay. Uh, when you were in high school or college, what was your what was your major? Um, my major changed. Um, it was nursing, and then I changed to arts. Um, but when I when I decided not to pursue nursing any longer, I did withdraw. So. Okay. And when you first met Mr. Bishop, where did you meet him at? What was, what was that question? Where did you meet Mr. Bishop at when you first met him? How did you learn about him? Where did you meet him? Yeah, so I, I met him, um, well, initially I first saw his videos online. Um, it was a music video, um, Shining Bright, the song. And then um, I started to go and learn more about his teachings on YouTube. Um, I saw what he was teaching and I saw that he was very handsome. And I was like, oh, I want to know more about him. So I started to learn more. Okay, and when did you first meet him? I met him September of 2018. That's when I first met him. In person? Yes. And where was that at? Now, according to Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade's arrest records, her date of birth is 4-22-1987, which would mean that when she joined the cult in 2018, Aya was 31 years old. Person? Yes. And where was that at? Mexico. Okay. Uh, and from September of 2018 uh, until now, have you been around them? Yes, every day. Okay. All right. Um, and so going back, that's six years? Sounds about right? It sounds right. Okay. Um, during that six years, um, have you ever been hit by him? Uh, in a violent manner? Has he ever punched you, kicked you, or beat you? No. Okay. Have you seen him act violently toward? When Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, responded to Robert Booker's question of, has he ever hit you or harmed you in any way? She says, no. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Kick you or beat you? No. Okay. Have you seen him act violently toward other women? No, I've never seen him act violently toward other women. Now he is, he's a communicator. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my gosh, stop fucking lying. And we all know that's a lie because Aya, aka Porsche Wade, has indeed been present on numerous occasions in which Eligio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, a.k.a. Chief Hopper John Hot Pocket, a.k.a. Chief Administrative Segregation, abused Velvet, 
as well as Queen Malia, aka Tanisha Dulay. Him act violently toward other women. Now he is he's a communicator. He likes to talk, so he is very uh, passionate when he speaks, and most people mistake that for being uh, violent. But he's not aggressive. He's just very passionate about what he says. Okay. Has he instructed other women, uh, including yourself, to hit other people in the group on his behalf? There was a unanimous decision made by the group of people that were there. We all had a meeting, and it was a unanimous decision that we would implement the slapping part as a part of spiritual improv for the documentary we were recording. Okay, and what, what does that mean for people who are not under, what does that mean? Which part? Well, we were slapping each other for uh, for improv. What, what that, was it for attention purposes? It was for attention mostly because what we teach doesn't get a lot of views. The drama gets more views than the teaching. Okay. We're more interested in people learning about what we have to teach. So we did get creative on different ways where we can get more attention. Okay. Um, the slapping was a part of it because once we saw Chris Rock slap, I mean, once we saw Will Smith slap Chris Rock, we thought it was very funny, and the whole everybody thought it was funny. And we was like, "That's how you get a lot of attention. We'll do that." Everybody agreed. Okay. What Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, is trying to insinuate is that they were inspired by the slap that Chris Rock received from Will Smith at the Academy Awards on March 27, 2022. The only part of this that doesn't really add up is that Carbonation started slapping each other long before Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. That's how you get a lot of attention. We'll do that. Everybody agreed. Okay. It wasn't for purposes of intimidation or to punish people or anything like that? No. Okay. All right. So during the time that you've been in the group, you, you got to know, uh, do you know Velvet Marquez? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Kayla Butner? Yes, I do. Uh, Brianna Jacobs? Yes, I do. Okay. During the time that you've been in the group, you, you got to know, uh, do you know Velvet Marquez? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, Kayla Butner? Yes, I do. Uh, Brianna Jacobs? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Brianna Jacobs. How, how long was I ran that back because I wanted y'all to notice that Robert Booker asked Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, if she knew Kayla Buckner, a.k.a. Efru. I believe that he mixed up the names here because Kayla Buckner, a.k.a. Efru, was not a part of the other act's evidence. Uh, Jacobs? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Brianna Jacobs. How, how long was she around in the group? Brianna Jacobs um, wasn't around long. She came and left a lot. Um, maybe she came twice, um, but she wasn't around us a lot. Okay. She had her own relationship that she was in, so okay. she mostly was just staying with us. Okay. Was there a time in 2021 or 2022 that she called and asked to become a member of the group again? Yes, she did. Okay. Um, and had she been had she been gone for from the group for a while when she did that? Yes, she's okay. been gone for a year. Okay, but she called and asked, could she could she come around? She called and asked to come around, and then when she did come to our house in Atlanta, we did a um, an online interview of her, asking her why she decided to come. Okay, was she was she permitted to come back? Of course, yes. Okay. She was. Did she in fact come back? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, Kendra Carter, how, how often were you around her? I was around Kendra Carter a lot. We both cooked in the kitchen okay. a lot of times. Okay. And during the six years you've been um, in the group, Kendra Carter was in the group for a good portion of that time? Oh, yes. Kendra Carter was there before I, before I was. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was uh, Velvet Marquez um, around a lot as well? Yes, she was. Um, when she decided to come back, she was. Okay. Did she and Mr. Bishop have a child together? Yes, they do. Beautiful girl. Okay. Um, was she around when you first got to um, 
I think you said Puerto Rico or Costa Rica. Where did you meet him first time? Mexico. Mexico. I'm in the wrong place altogether. So was she around at that time? Yes, she was. Okay. All right. Did you ever have you ever seen Mr. Bishop hit her or punch her or body slam her or anything along those lines? No. Have you ever seen Mr. Bishop tell someone else to go hit her? No. Uh, in order to okay. No. All right. Now there was production done. Every- Y'all, I wonder if Aya, aka Porsche Wade, realizes that there is enough video evidence on Beyonce's internet of Eligio Bishop, aka Nature Boy, instructing the cult members to hit each other. Additionally, guys, if y'all have been watching for a long time, many of you will remember the following incident, which, while the altercation was not physically caught on camera, we can clearly hear what was happening in the background as Aya, aka Porsche Wade, was holding the phone and then asked, should I keep rolling this? What I seen, no, sit down, sit down, yo. The baby's in your hand, yo. Hold on, Chris, hold it quick. The baby's in your hand, I Now, as I said, while it wasn't captured on camera, we can all hear Velvet Marquez screaming at the top of her lungs. Have you ever seen Mr. Bishop tell someone else to go hit her uh, in order to? Okay. All right. Now, there was production done every day. Uh, was production done in such a way where um, it was recording frequently? Yes, there was recording all the time. And these were, were these videos that were placed on the, on the internet? Yes, they were. Okay. And were the people that were following you are uh, following your group on the internet? Yes. Okay. Was the acting, were there different characters that you would act with? We had a lot of different characters. Um, Eligio had a lot of different characters as well. Okay. Uh, what were some of the characters that he had? His most popular character was Dr. Bishop. Um, he had Leroy. He had Totally Todd, um, Uncle Fernando the Commando, and his most recent character was Three God. Okay, and these were all characters that he uh, that he used online? Yes, they are. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going to jump on forward to March 24th. Well, let, let's deal with the next call out of the country first. When when you were outside the country, um, did you guys use the bathroom outside the house? Uh, using the bathroom outside the house was everyone's choice. You, we had restrooms everywhere that we went. Um, well, you know, there's restrooms in house. You could use the restroom in the house if you wanted to. Everybody did. They took showers. It's regular. It's normal. Um, if they wanted to use the restroom outside, they could. Okay. And it, uh, and the reason why there was um, using the restroom outside is because of our beliefs, which is protected by First Amendment. I mean that we believe that essentially there's a um, a natural flow of exchange with the earth that we live on. So okay. you use the bathroom on the earth, you get blessings. Okay. All right. So. Um after you, you left there, jumping forward to March 24th, 2022, were you in the house that day, that night? Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, was Janae Newell, and let me ask, have you been around Janae Newell? Yes. Okay. Uh, what name did she go by? She went by Natiri. Okay. What, what do you remember uh, seeing uh, regarding Janae Newell on March 24th, 2022? Tell the jury. Uh, what was that question again? What, what did you... What do you recall about Janine Newell on March 24, 2022, uh, about her interactions with Mr. Bishop? What did you witness? Well, I know that she did get into an altercation with the women. Um, and then after there was an altercation with the women, she decided that she wanted to leave. Um, she did tell us that she really didn't want to leave, but she was just upset 
with the women. Um, after she said that she wanted to leave, I mean, we helped her get her stuff. She went upstairs to get her bags. I mean, and of course the women were, they were, you know, arguing with her. Um, I believe when she went upstairs to grab her paintings and stuff, um, Kendra Carter was upset with her and, um, you know, giving her her, throwing her paintings in her suitcase. Um, and um, so when she got her stuff and she was ready to leave, she went downstairs. Um, Alia Bishop was downstairs, asked her if she was okay. Um, but she said no, and he was like, okay, well, you had a ride. She said, yes, my ride's on the way. And he's like, okay, go ahead. Okay. You can leave. Okay. And so was her ride an Uber or something outside? It was an Uber outside. Did you actually see it? Yes, I did. I was outside with her for a moment when she was getting ready to leave. Both her bags were outside by the door, outside of the door, close to the Uber where she was going. Okay. Um, and so, did you witness her go back inside? I didn't witness her go back inside. Okay. When she came back inside, I was already upstairs in the back, back in the back bedroom. I was laying down. Okay. Um, and what happened? What did you witness from there? Um, well, I was laying in the back room. I saw her come in first, and then Alicia came in shortly after. They were talking. And they didn't see me laying in the bed. Um, once they saw me laying in the bed, they smiled at me, and then they um, said, it's, can, I, can you give me a moment to talk? Okay. And this was on the second floor of the house? Second floor of the house. Okay. And what which room was this? Was it a bedroom or? It was a bedroom. Okay. What did, was it a bedroom with bunk beds in, or what, what bedroom was it? The bedroom was bunk beds all the way to the end. All right, and were bunk beds the only beds in that room? Yes, they were. Okay, and were you laying on the top bunk or the bottom bunk? The bottom bunk. Okay. Uh, does this bedroom have a bathroom as well? Yes, it does. Okay, does it connect to another room? Yes, it does. Okay. All right, so you saw her come in first and him come in afterwards. Is that what you testified to? Yes. Okay. Uh, was he pulling her, pushing her, prodding her? No. Anyway? No, he, when, when she came in, she came in first. They weren't holding hands or anything like that. He came in shortly after her. Okay. All right. And um, they talked and they asked you to excuse them? Yes. Okay. Can you tell the jury what you witnessed? Uh, well, when, when they first came into the room, they were they like did a quick hug or whatever, and they were talking. They were talking very low, so I did not hear what they said, actually. But then they turned to me, and they were kind of sad, said, oh, uh, you're laying in the bed. And I was like, yes, I'm right here. And then they were like, well, can, you, can you excuse me for a moment so we can talk? I said, yes, I will. And I went into the bathroom that's right there that connects the two bedrooms. Okay. All right. What was the next thing that you witnessed regarding Janae and Elysia? Um, I, so I was in the bathroom that whole time. Um, How long do you think? Just an estimate. Um, if I could estimate, I would probably say I was in there for around six minutes. Okay. Um... During that time, um, I had turned the lights off and it was kind of lower dim because I did have a headache. Okay. And so I could hear everything that was going on because the bathroom is very small and it connects both bedrooms. Okay. So when I was in that um, bathroom, I didn't hear any noises or anything that was un like irregular. You didn't hear anybody hitting anybody or crying or... I ain't even finna hold y'all, but we all know that if Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, or anybody else on Team Too Much had this type of evidence that could potentially paint a different picture of the night's events, they would have been told the police. They would have been on Beyonce's internet screaming it loud and proud that they witnessed everything. So, this clearly is a story that Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, and Eligio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy, came up with. Dumb one, but it is a story. Like, irregular. You didn't hear anybody hitting anybody or crying or no. anything along those lines? No. Okay. Um, and so, do you see Janae Newell again after you come out of the bathroom? Yes. Right 
six minutes, like, well, around six minutes after I came out of the bathroom, I opened the door. Um, the, the door was back open again. Um, so I came out and I saw Janae. She was there. And then she looked at me and she smiled. She was like, can I go to the bathroom? And I said, I smiled her. I was like, yeah, of course. Why are you asking me that? You know you can use the bathroom. Okay. And then she was like, oh, okay. Yeah, she hears that. Okay, I don't think it's for the purpose of the truth of the matter asserted, but sure, we'll skip me on that. All right, um, well, just for the record, I'm sustaining the objection. Go ahead. All right, you're not able to say, they don't want you to say what Ms. Newell told you. Uh, so, uh, okay. did she go into the bathroom? She went into the bathroom after that. Okay. Did you see her again after that? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, where did you see her at? I saw her walk into the master bedroom where we were. We were all in the closet getting ready to go to bed. Mr. Bishop was live. Um, we were in the bathroom, I mean the closet, we were getting dressed. She came in briefly and she gave us a hug. And then I asked her, was she going to sleep? Which room was she going to sleep in? Okay. She told me which one. Sustained. Don't repeat what someone else told you. Okay. So you communicated with her mm -hmm. and you learned, without saying what you learned, you learned which bedroom she was going to sleep in? Yes. Okay. All right, and did you see her again after that time? Um, after that, I didn't see her. Okay, all right. Uh, did you guys go to sleep? Yes. Okay, and you said Mr. Bishop was on live? Yes, he did a live that night. Okay, all right, and that was in the main bedroom? He was in the main bedroom. Okay, yes. all and right. He, he was in the main bedroom, and he would walk down to um, the bottom of the living room area. He would, he would walk around. Okay. In all right. Um, had you seen Miss Newell and Mr. Bishop being affectionate together? Were they were they affectionate in front of the other people? Uh, they were affectionate all the time in front of everyone. There was many many photo shoots that we conducted with me myself included in these photo shoots. There were many dances that they did together. Um, you know, they just had a nice relationship. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Interested in a great read? Check out Greatness is a Habit authored by Aaron Dixon also known as True. Many of you know him as True. He has authored this amazing read. The book is available on Apple Books. Get your copy today and stay motivated to win. A nice relationship. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, was Mr. Bishop in a polygamous relationship? Uh, was there more than one wife that he had? Well, technically, he's not polygamous because he's not married to legally to more than one spouse. He okay. did have, um, you know, a lot of girlfriends, of women who likes him mm -hmm. there, but he's not a polygamous. Okay. Was there one woman who was considered to be his queen? Yes. And who was that? Uh, Tanisha DeLay. She goes by Queen Malia. Okay. Um, was there jealousy among some of the other women regarding her? Regarding Queen Malia? Yes. Um, yes, there was. Um, there was uh, Janae. She was very jealous. Um, she did compete a lot to go to, you know, to get to the queen position. Um, we held a queen pageant where it was Queen Malia, Janae, and I myself. We were um, all nominated to be queen. Um, and Janae, she just wanted to be the queen, so she did a lot of stuff to try to get that spot. Okay. All right. Um, was all that recorded uh, online or was just... Bless her heart. Bless her heart, y'all. Aya, a.k.a. Porsche Wade, sat up on the stand and she actually parted her lips to say that she was nominated. Well, they were nominated to become the queen of nothing. All right. Um, was all that recorded... Uh, online or was it just within the house? Yes, the queen competition is recorded. Okay. Yes, it okay. is. A couple of questions about your your beliefs uh, that I have to ask you. Uh, do you believe that Mr. Bishop is God? Well, God essentially is a spirit and a spirit is something that essentially is within every person. So we, I believe that everybody is God 
because they essentially have that same life force energy within them. Okay. All right. Uh, did you, when Mr. Bishop was um, at the house, did you guys have rules that if someone were to break, that there would be some sort of physical violence on that person? No. Okay. Uh, were there uh, scenarios where Mr. Bishop, if he didn't eat dinner, then nobody would eat dinner? Was that a rule? No. If anybody was hungry, they would just go safe. I was over the kitchen. I cooked a lot. I made sure that there was food made, and so I put it to the side. If anybody wanted to come and eat, they could just come and grab something, like say, for instance, this pot is here. There okay. will be food there just sitting there for people to eat. Okay. All right. So there was no, no food was not um, kept back from the, the group? No. Okay. Uh, what about if, if he didn't go to sleep, then nobody else could go to sleep? Was that true? And no. I, I would sleep all the time. So when, I got when I got tired, I went to sleep. Okay. People okay. could go to sleep if they want to go to sleep. Okay. And if people disagreed with Mr. Bishop, uh, would he do things to them, like isolate them, put them in a closet, beat them up, those types of things? And no, he wouldn't do that. Okay. No. Um, I'm going to ask you because I'm sure the state's going to ask you. Uh, have you been in regular contact with Mr. Bishop? Um, over the last year or two? Yes. Okay. Do you talk to him frequently? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, would you lie for him? Would you come in court and just say stuff on his behalf that's untrue? No. I stand on the principle of justice. And Alivio is my friend. But, and Alivio is my friend. But, and Alivio is my friend. But, and Alivio is my friend. But I will tell So, on the stand, Aya a.k.a. Porsche Wade, refers to Eligio Bishop, a.k.a. Nature Boy, as her friend. Not her husband. Not her Messiah. Not three God. Mm-mm. Her friend. And Eligio is my friend, but I will tell the truth. Okay. Has he told you what to say to them? No. Okay. Um, has he influenced what you said today? No, um, I am a first-hand witness of everything that has went on. Like I said before, I've been with him for six years. So I've seen a lot of things that go on. So okay. what I'm saying today is the truth of what my account of what happened for okay. all of these events. Okay. Um, have, do you care about him now? Yes, I do. Um, where do you live here in Atlanta now, still? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, do you talk to him on a pretty frequent basis? Yes, I do. Daily? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sure the state's going to ask you this. Where you stay now, is the rent paid on your property by him? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have income of your own? No. Okay, where do you get income from? Um, essentially, there's people who look out for us or they donate to us. Um, I reach out. Um, my sister, she sent money for us to pay out the rent and stuff like that. Um, and just people who are concerned with us, they send us money to pay the rent. Okay. A couple more questions that I'm going to sit down. The April 7th, 2022, were you at the house that day? April 7th. When Mr. Bishop was arrested? Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, were, did everybody have a phone in the house? Was phones frequent or were they kept for people? Yeah, everybody had multiple phones and devices. Okay. Um, and so were people able to call their family members if they wanted to? Yes, if they wanted to call anybody who they wanted to call, they could. Okay. And during the six years that you have been um, in the group, were did people's family sometimes come and visit them? Yes. Um, Kayla Buckner, her family visited on two different, two separate occasions. One in back in 2020, she came over for a get together. Mm -hmm. um, her mother, her grandmother, and her brother. Okay. Um, in 2000, and I'm, I'm not sure, but I believe it was in 2021. 
They came over um, at the 2993 Arbor Chase address, and we had a get together with a lot of people there. Um, it was a lot of people, a lot of different family relatives, you know, just people who came. But if so, if you if a person wanted to stay in contact with their family, they could. Yes, and there was many occasions where um, my sister reached out. She, um, you know, and even if she did, she reached out online, um, and we did a live on there. We were talking in front of the public, and then she called me afterwards, and I talked to her some more. Okay. Uh, so going back to April 7, 2022, the police, uh, did they question you on that day? April 7? Yes, ma'am. No, I did demand to know what was happening on multiple occasions from the detectives, and they did not tell me what was going on. Okay, so you were not interviewed that day? No, I was put into a room, and I was told by Monica Pinocchio. No, you can't talk about what someone else told you. Okay. Uh, I was put into a room, and I was waiting for someone to come and talk to me. Um, I waited for, about, you know, some hours. And then once somebody came by, I asked them, when am I going to be questioned, and when am I going to be let know what's going on? Um, I was moved to another room for questioning, uh, where I waited another hour, and no one ever came to question me. And so you ultimately were released after that? Ultimately, after that, I was released. Okay. And within the house, the devices that were within the house, they were typically um, devices that were used by the group in order to make music production and video production? Yes, there was a lot of cameras, um, equipment. People had tablets, cell phones, computers. Um, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Stacy, I have a few questions for you. Carl? Good afternoon. Hi. All right, just a few questions for you. Um, so I think on direct examination, you talked about um, witnessing the Chris Rock slap. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, I did. Um, and that was funny to you all? Yes, it was. And you thought that would get you all attention? Yes. Um, because it got Chris Rock attention? Yes, it did. Um, among other things, we do notice that from our experience, with more than just the Chris Rock slap, but before that, we noticed that our numbers go up in the room as soon as there is some sort of drama or an argument or some sort of something that somebody can look at and pay attention to. And you realize the Chris Rock slap was March 27, 2022, right? Uh, I'm not aware of that. So it was after this incident occurred. Okay. All right. So when you, when you, I ain't even finna hold y'all, but I almost fell out when the prosecutor came in and was like, do you realize that that slap happened after you guys were slapping each other the night of the incident? And I was like, oh, okay. She couldn't say nothing else because she knows she was lying, sitting up there on the stand under oath, lying through her teeth. And you realize the Chris Rock slap was March 27, 2022, right? Uh, I'm not aware of that. So it was after this incident occurred. Okay. All right. So when you when you joined uh, Mr. Bishop's group, and you're still a member, right? Uh, a member? Yes, of Carbon Nation. No. Okay. Are you not a member of Carbon Nation anymore? Uh, Carbon, Carbon Nation... Uh, that is just a very touchy subject. I was affiliated with Carbon Nation, um, a member. I don't know if it could be called a member technically because, I mean, we were just a group of people that joined his life. We just wanted to come and be with him. Fair so enough. I don't know if I could call it me being a member. Okay. You're still in his group joining his life? Yes. Today? Yes. All right. And uh, when you joined his group, you had to sell any belongings that you had? Can you repeat that? When you joined his group, you had to sell any of the belongings that you had? You said myself? Not yourself, any of your belongings. You had to sell. Now, for those of you who have been watching, as well as for those of you who are new, 
that question seemed to have triggered Aya, aka Porsche Wade, a little bit because word on the curb allegedly, and this came from her own testimony when she arrived in the cult, she used to be in the oldest profession in the book. So when she said, you said myself, it was almost as if she was kind of concerned that the prosecution had history information on her. That you have? You said myself? Not yourself, any of your belongings. You had to sell them to get money. No. Okay. No. I and didn't sell anything to get money. All right. When you when you came to the group, did you have money? No. I didn't have any money. And while you were in the group, you weren't allowed to work, were you? Um, I wasn't working before I came to the group. I wasn't working for about five years, five to six years prior to me joining the group. And other folks in the group, they weren't allowed to work, were they? If they wanted to leave and work, they could. Outside of the group, they could work? Outside of the group, they could. Okay. And uh, let's talk about some of the rules. Uh, Mr. Bishop had rules for the women. You said rules? I want to talk about rules. Rules. <laughs> okay. Rules. There were certain roles for women, right? Rules. Rules. Uh, spell. Are you talking about role, R-O-L-E, or rule, R-U-L-E? I'm talking about general rules, R-U-L-E-S, uh -huh. and then the roles, R-O-L-E-S, of women, okay? Yes. Um, and he thought women were less than the men, right? No. Y'all were on equal footing? Yes, and I just want to say most of the things that he does say online are for a wow factor. But he doesn't, he probably did say that one time in his videos that he felt that women were beneath him. But essentially, you know, he has been had said in many other videos where he thinks that women are his equal and that women are um, essentially above him because we are. The, you know, we carry him and men, children inside our wounds. Okay. And he thinks women are property, right? His property. He doesn't think that women, all women are his property. If you, if he believes that if you're in a relationship with him, um, that, you know, you're, you're his, you're his woman. And it's not to say you're his property as in like, you know, a tag or something like that. He's not saying it in that type of term. Okay. And um, he, he tells you all how to dress, right? No. He didn't tell you how to dress today? No. He didn't tell you to make sure you wore something that was different from what you normally wear? A lot of people give me advice on what to wear because I'm a public figure. So I get many phone calls every day. People tell me, don't wear this, don't wear that. Essentially, it's my choice on what I want to wear. But I'm asking specifically about Mr. Bishop and what he told you and the other wives, girlfriends, women that he's in a relationship with. He told you all what to wear to come to court, didn't he? He didn't pick out my outfit. He doesn't know what I have in my closet. Um, now, you gave this, uh, your testimony today about Janae coming in the room, um, they smiled at you, they asked for a moment. You, you testified to that on direct, right? Can you say that one more time? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, on direct examination, when Mr. Booker was asking you questions, mm -hmm. um, you testified that Janae and Mr. Bishop came into the room, they smiled at you, they asked for a moment. Yes and that you were in the bathroom the entire time. Yes, I was. And you have never given that statement to law enforcement, ever, have you? I was never asked by law enforcement. And when this all happened on April, when we were arrested on April 7th, um, was it April 7th? I asked, no one was ever asked me any questions. So I don't know the legal process. And I was reaching out to several different people to, you know, help me on where should I, what should I do? Um, but essentially, no, I didn't give this to any officers, but I did give it to Booker. And I believe when he first 
um, came on to our case as a lawyer, I gave him this same story. Okay. And just a couple more questions. Mr. Bishop would often tell you guys that outside was hell. You said that he told us that outside was hell? Mr. I don't know if I said Mr. Booker. I meant Mr. Bishop if I did. Mr. Bishop would often tell you guys that outside was hell. Well, his our beliefs are protected under the First Amendment rights. We don't believe that outside essentially is hell. We believe that this is, you know, this is the earth and we have we wake up every day and there's another chance and another opportunity. Hell is a mental state. So if you are living where you did something wrong and you feel guilty and you feel regret for that, then we will say you're in a hell state of mind. Okay. And and you believe that Mr. Bishop is your Lord? No. Okay. You don't believe he's the Messiah? Yes, he is the Messiah. He does uh, bring a certain message for a general uh, group of people. And because he is the Messiah, you can't say no to him, can you? Yes, I say no to him a lot, actually. And there's consequences when that happens, right? No, I don't know. There's no consequences when you say no. You just say no and everything's fine. He's fine with it. Yeah, essentially he'll ask, um, well, why? And then you say, well, I just, no, I just don't want to. Then it's like, okay. All right. Uh, now, social media, you all had an online presence back in March 2022. You still do, right? Yes. And Mr. Bishop had a Twitter page. Yes. And he was the only one that controlled, or he was one that controlled that Twitter page. No. Nothing was posted without his consent. No. There were things that were posted without his consent. There were things that I posted, videos that I posted on there. Um, but then if mainly those were hit, that was his page. Mainly he, he was in control over his own page. But there were times where I would post something on there that I liked. Okay. And the videos of Janae, you didn't post those, did you? I posted one because I am in the video with her. Are you admitting that you just posted? Y'all. All of Aya's testimony, in my opinion, is like the worst episode of anything for my man. Because she lied the entire time. And also, she implicated herself in committing a crime. In the video with her. Are you admitting that you just posted pornographic videos of Janae on Twitter? Yeah. Okay. I did because I'm in the video with her. You know that's a crime, right? No. It's not a crime once when the person agreed for the video to be posted and I'm actually in the video with her with several other women that day and we were teaching a class after that video. His Twitter page is open right now. There's multiple videos that show the date that, that that those Twitter videos were posted, it was posted before she left. She was there. There was many videos that me and her did together to promote that we were posting on Twitter. There was one um, post that we did where we were sitting, me and her, sitting on Mr. Bishop's lap with our butts showing. So yes, she was well aware that we posted the videos because I was in the video with her. Okay. So you're saying you posted one of those videos? Yes, I did. All right. Now, let's just talk about uh, your contact with Mr. Bishop since this trial's going on. Y'all okay. talk every single night, right? Yes, we do. And when y'all talk, it's you, yes. Malia, or Tanisha DeLay. Yes. And uh, Kayla Buckner. Yes. Every time y'all talk, it's the three of y'all. Yes. And he's called Ms. DeLay's phone 59 times since last week, since this trial has started. Yes. And he's called your phone 18 times since this trial started. Yes. 
and he's called Ms. Buckner's phone five times since this trial started. Yes. So y'all have talked in, a la in the last week at least 82 times. Yes. And he's called Ms. DeLay's phone 59 times since last week since this trial has started. Yes. And he's called your phone 18 times since this trial started. Yes. And he's called Ms. Buckner's phone five times since this trial started. Yes. So y'all have talked in, a la in the last week at least 82 times. Yes. And in those conversations, he gives you updates. I'm just saying, 82 times since the trial started? And that was, what, four days into the trial? And he called them a total of 82 times? They was really trying to get their testimonies together. 82 times. Yes. And in those conversations, he gives you updates about what's happening in the trial. Yes. He tells you what people are saying. Yes. He's telling you what Janae is saying. Uh, he doesn't tell me what Janae is saying. But y'all talk about the trial, right? Yes, we talked about the trial in general. We don't talk about specifics all the time of the trial. That's all I have Any redirect? Oh, all right, can she be excused? Yes, and she can remain in the courtroom. She can remain in the courtroom as long as there are no outdoors. She's not going to have any outdoors. Okay, she can remain in the courtroom. All right, next witness. Y'all doing okay? Nobody forcing me in prison. Prison is for motherfucking karma. So a bitch would be in there for something they didn't do. For karma they paying off from something shit they did. Ain't no mistakes, bitch. You right where you supposed to be. To the remaining members, I hope you're free your mind. Life without parole, that's a mighty long time. A reason to feel bad is gonna be hard to find. Especially for a nigga who record his own crime. Ocean breeze and palm trees is what he sold it as. Disease and false prophecy is what came to pass. No time to critically think, you're moving too fast. Ball head looking like who cut the grass. One significant factor I think is really funny is how you speak out against jobs but want all the money. Playing God, it is you as the ultimate dummy. It's a rap for the three, nickname that boy the mummy. 030124, my favorite day. The citizens of the cab, man, they ain't come to play. Now your messiah will never see the light of day. If Babylon is so bad, how long you plan to stay? What do you want to call me a murderer for? I've never killed anyone. We commit an act of revolutionary suicide. Your only chance to evacuate is to leave with us. Ha! One, two, karma came for you. Three, four, police knocked down the door. Sealed your fate, nigga. 